This is lesson six in the Android Learning Path. And this lesson is about tracking events and how we as developers um, sometimes need a way to determine um, where in the program our code is executing. That's especially helpful when things are going wrong or you're trying to do something special and you can't quite figure out where to do it. So we talked about in the previous lesson all these different methods that are executing um, on create, on start, on restart, some of our custom methods, show progress, download music. So how do we know when one of these methods um, is actually executing? There's a lot of different um, uh, strategies that we can use to do that, uh, but one of the most popular strategies is to use another output window similar to the console, um, and, and we call it the log cat. So to show the log cat um, output window, I'm gonna go up here to window, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna choose show view, and then other view, and I'm gonna choose the log cat. So this log is very, very detailed and it shows us lots of different things. Um, sometimes the number of things that it shows us can be overwhelming. So I'll show you some tricks on how to filter it to show you only the things that you're interested in. So the red X right here is what we use to clear the log cat. And I'm gonna launch this application and I'm gonna show you what the log cat um, displays if we don't do anything other than just show it. So you can see that there's lots and lots of things happening um, that Android's doing and it's printing it all to this log cat window as this application runs. So when I click the load next screen button, um, nothing's gonna happen because we changed our code around to where all that did was trigger the download music method, which is right here, which triggered this method, this method, and this method. So how would we know if the download music method actually was triggered. When I click this button, if you watch this console, in fact, I'm gonna clear it right now again. When I click this button, nothing happens. There's nothing being output there. So we need to, a way to, to enter some information into this console when the button's clicked. So let me show you how to do that um, the, the old the old fashioned way, the manual way, then I'll show you how um, the BuzzTouch project that you download from your source code does a lot of that for you. So I'm going to find the download music method, and I'm going to add to that method a line of code called log cat, um, and I'm going to put my tag, and then I'm going to put download music clicked, and I'll explain this in just a sec. So this log, and we get the little red line there because I need to import the log um, methods, so we just imported the utility dot uh, where is it? We just imported utility.log, android.utility.log. So what's going to happen now is we just told Android to print a statement to, down here to the log, give it a tag of my tag, and we'll use that tag here in a minute, and then give it a message of download music clicked. So let's run this again, and we will see if that worked like we expected it to work. I'm just going to let it run and then I'm going to clear the console again or the, the log cat. I get in the habit of calling it a console because in iOS it's a console. I spend a lot of time doing iOS. Okay, so we're going to clear this and now what's going to happen is I'm going to click this button um, on our application and what we expect is it to print to the log our message. So you can see now that I clicked that message and right here the orange tag is our message. So the reason that it's orange is because I put this W right here, log W, or that's for warning, and all the warnings will show up orange. So we can click this over and over again, and you can see in the log cat the, the, the event that's being triggered, or the, the log statement. So one trick to do this is to add these log statements strategically throughout your code, show progress, Uh, fired or triggered and it will prove to us when each method is triggered so show progress download song let's put that in there and what we would expect to find 
um, when we click this button now because we know that the button triggers this, then this, then this, then this, is we'll see all of our log cat statements um, output in the order that we would expect because this is a simple example. So you can see the download music was clicked, then show progress fired, download song, hide progress fired. And then we could put right here, end of download music method. And then after that, the control flow is going to return back up to right here. And we could say download music returned. So we can place these log cat statements throughout our code strategically to help us get an understanding of when things are happening. And that's really, really useful. And then, of course, if we keep clearing it, um, we, it's, it becomes easier to read when we, when we want to erase it. So you can see here that all of our log statements are showing there. So how do we show only the statements that we're interested in? Because you will literally get thousands of statements in this log cat. So this is where filters come in. So what we can do is we can use this plus button to create a filter and we'll call it uh, my tags and then we'll do it by tag name and so we created a tag called my tag on every one of these log statements we use the same tag so now we can run this filter and just see the statements that we printed. So in the buzz touch code all of the code has a zz tag so you can create a filter for the ZZ tag and see lots and lots of different statements printing to the screen um, so that you can figure out where the code is executing. So I'm going to close this um, generic project that we created and we're going to open up the Android project that we downloaded from our control panel a few lessons ago and I will demonstrate to you how the log cat uh, really helps us determine what's going on inside of our application. Okay, so what I've done here is I cheated a little bit and I stopped the recording and I came um, back to Eclipse and I removed our Monterey Harbor project that we wrote by hand and I opened up the Monterey Harbor project that we downloaded from our control panel, our BuzzTouch control panel. So we have lots and lots of class files in here now and we have um, all of the parts that we would expect to have and then I launched it in the simulator and I'm running it in the simulator right now, similar to the way we did in the first few lessons. So down here in the log cat, which I still have open, um, remember the filter we created um, for the tag labeled my tags or my tag? I'm going to remove that. We don't need that anymore. And the reason we're going to remove that is because in the buzz touch projects, all of the log cat information is going to be um, tagged with ZZ. I'm going to create a new filter in our log cat, and I'm going to call this um, buzz touch messages and I'm going to log this by tag ZZ. So the buzz touch messages down here will show um, when we do a, almost anything inside of our application when it's running. So this is the simulator and this is Eclipse with the log running and I'm going to tap um, the location map screen and you can see here in our buzz touch messages that there's all kinds of information here I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. All kinds of information here related to that one single thing that I did. I tapped the menu item. So this information in this log really helps us determine which methods are running. And so you can see here that all the log messages follow a, um, a, a convention here. It tells us the name of the class file, BT screen menu list simple, and the name of the method, handle item tap, and then a little note. So we could look at this one single line right there and we could go to our project source code and we could find the class file called BT screen menu list simple which is in our source directory right here so BT screen menu list simple which is right here I'm gonna go ahead and open that up and then I can find um, a method called handle item tap so handle item tap this is a long class file is in here somewhere I can just search for it handle item tap find and you can see here this is where this is the line of code that printed this message to the log cat so we use a class that's included in your in your downloaded source code called the BT or the buzz touch debugger and there's a method called show it 
And so what we do is we print the activity name, the method name, handle item tap, and then a little note. So there's all kinds of these log cat statements injected into your project um, so that you can easily determine what part of your code is executing and that can be tremendously helpful. So get used to using the log and then create a filter with ZZ as the tags um, filter value and you can see now all kinds of different um, messages and clues and hints as to which class file is running which method and which order they are running. So hopefully that helped you learn how to track some events um, and hopefully you can take advantage of how useful that can be in some of your future projects.